we compare long-term topical medication use uh, to SLT in terms of their effect on the success rates of glaucoma surgery, we have to go back to the literature, we have to see what evidence we have. So the evidence is long-term use of anti-glaucomatous topical medications would reduce success rates. Or the same situation also happens if you use an ALT. Now, if you use an SLT, there's no evidence whatsoever that that would reduce success rates. We simply do not have such evidence, and we probably might never have such evidence taking in consideration that selective laser trabeculoplasty is less aggressive on the trabeculum compared to ALT and does not touch the conjunctiva, as is the case with topical medications. So we have been employing the technology to reduce pressure after glaucoma surgery, after any type of glaucoma surgery, to be honest, if we are unable to control the pressure in the, in, in the desired fashion. Uh, in Geneva, we have also randomized patients in a prospective randomized trial to compare uh, post-operative medications, so post-operative anti-glaucoma medications, versus selective laser trabeculoplasty in cases where pressure is not attained after glaucoma surgery. The rationale is simple. Patient went in to have an operation. Many patients aspire to stop medications. We cannot always provide that. We aspire to that as well as surgeons, but it doesn't always work our way. And if you look at long-term uh, results of any type of glaucoma surgery, more or less, you will have success rates in the range of about 50% of cases will not need topical medications after the operation. But there's another 50% where the pressure is not attained. And there you have two, two routes, in my opinion. One is to, again, put them on medications. And the other is to go for selective laser trabeculoplasty. From my point of view as a surgeon, I would rather go for selective laser trabeculoplasty, hoping to continue to, continue to stop our, my patients from taking topical medications. I would imagine that we will have better results with glaucoma surgery in patients that have been subjected to SLT versus patients that have been taking topical medications for many years. A few days ago, we had a symposium on what would you use as um, an initial therapy. And for the first time, I could see the audience split between about 50% wanting to start the therapy if they had glaucoma with SLT versus another half that would go for topical medication. So the acknowledgement that you probably get the best results of SLT in, as a primary therapy compared to medication is slowly gaining ground. Would I recommend to every patient to go immediately for SLT or to go immediately for a medication? Or, this really depends on a case-by-case -case selection, but I can definitely see that there is a, a big niche of patients or a big group of patients that are slowly getting bigger as time, incre time advances as, and as our understanding and experience with the technology increases. I can see that the potential for the use of SLT as a primary therapy is absolutely gaining ground uh, for good reason. Now, what would that mean for glaucoma surgery? I can imagine that when you operate the patient after an SLT in comparison to after many, many years of topical anti-glaucoma therapy, you probably are in a much better place as a surgeon and the patient is in a much better situation in terms of the potential for a successful operation. So, uh, majority of patients suffering from glaucoma live in developing countries. Majority of patients blinded by glaucoma live in developing countries. Majority of patients living in developing countries don't have uh, access to glaucoma topical medications. They either don't have it physically in their, in their cities or in their countries, or they don't have the means to purchase such medications. And the majority of glaucoma specialists practicing in developing countries do not see a big role for anti-glaucoma medications, topical medications, in a developing setting. That leaves us with basically two options. Either going to glaucoma surgery, incisional surgery, or doing a trabeculoplasty. 
Now, I would definitely support selective laser trabeculoplasty as an initial therapy for almost all patients in developing countries, provided it's available. So if, at, if we can imagine a situation where developing center or centers in developing countries have the device on a large scale, and if the option becomes doing that or going to the operating room, I, I would struggle to see why would we go immediately to the operating room if we can control a good portion of our patients on a simple procedure like trabeculoplasty that is very user-friendly, that takes a few minutes to do, and that is not related with any high potential for complications. Take in consideration that glaucoma surgery, whatever it is, there is a real high potential for, for vision-threatening complications, and that should be avoided if, if at, at all costs, especially in a developing setting because the patient comes, he gets an operation, and he may disappear, and you will never see him again. When we know that the real struggle for glaucoma surgery and for the glaucoma surgeon happens after the operation and for a period of a couple of months, so yes, my, my experience with using SLT in developing setting has been very positive. In one of our centers that we are collaborating with uh, in Africa, we have actually installed a selective laser trabeculoplasty. And there I can tell you that we do not go, except, with, except for rare exceptions, uh, for, for an initial surgery, but we go for an initial selective laser trabeculoplasty and we have not been disappointed with the results that we're getting.